Now let's talk about the third core principle that I want you to be familiar with and to have a, a firm understanding, and that is membrane transport. And membrane transport basically just refers to how things enter or exit the cell, okay? And we're gonna be talking about the various mechanisms of that. But before we get into that component, let's first go back and look at the, uh, or review what a plasma membrane is. Let's look at the various different proteins and how different things are. And then we'll get into the actual membrane transport mechanisms. Uh, and this will be a multi-part video. I don't want one video too long, so I'm gonna to try to keep it down into smaller component parts. So let's get started with this first one and talk a little bit about the plasma membrane. Okay, so now what we're looking at here is the cell. And this purple outlined color here, that's the plasma membrane that I am going to be referring to. And just before we get into this too far, let me just reference where these images are coming from. This is part of the visible body program uh, that you can get. Uh, if you are in my class, let me know. You can get a discount at it. Um, if you are not, you can get this on, uh, on the web, on your iTunes or anything like that. Uh, and it's an excellent, excellent program and I recommend it. I don't make any money off of this, so I'm not selling it on this aspect. But when we look at the purple ish here, back to the plasma membrane, I'm going to click on this and you can see how it now turns this aqua color. So when I, when you see this color, I know it's a close match to, to the other organelles, but this aqua color is what I'm clicking on and referencing in this case. And in here, this is the plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane is made up of basically three different types of lipids. Phospholipids is your predominant lipid associated with this. And this is the phospholipid bilayer. And it keeps the cytosol in. Now cytosol is the liquid portion of the cytoplasm. And it keeps the interstitial fluid out. And the interstitial fluid is part of the extracellular compartment. That stuff on the outside of the cell. Another lipid, uh, type is going to be cholesterol and cholesterol is going to be located in the middle it's the hydrophobic region we'll get into that in a second uh, and that provides strength and um, stabilizes the plasma membrane in the cell with temperatures and stuff like that the third one is going to be a glycolipid and a glycolipid is found on the external surface of the cell. So it's exposed to the interstitial fluid and basically glyco sugar, lipid fat. Okay, so it's a, like a little sugar antenna sticking out from the cell and that's usually an identity marker. So it, it tells other cells will be able to recognize it as part of yourself and so forth. So we'll, we'll get into all that later on. So now let's look at the next one here, a close-up picture of the, the cell or the cell membrane, plasma membrane. And let me just pull this, I've got another screen here in front of me so I can draw on it a little bit better. And what this is, is you can see, let me uh, open this up. Okay, we can see on here that there is the plasma membrane, which is all these, the structure here, okay? And what we're seeing on this one is basically, this is the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer is going to have this, and then you're gonna have a couple little tails coming down. So think of this as the balloon, this top part is the balloon, and that's the string. And instead of one string, you got two, okay? The rounded portion, this section up here, that is going to be the uh, hydrophilic side. And hydrophilic is going to be polar. Remember the previous video? I talked about polar and nonpolar. Okay, so this is part of that. And hydrophilic means water loving. Hydro water, philic love, loves water. Okay, so it's going to face the liquid on the outside of the cell, which is interstitial fluid. And on the inside portion here, 
that is facing the cytosol, which is also the liquid, okay? The tail sections where you can see here, okay, those things are hydrophobic. Okay, so water, hydro, okay, phobic is afraid of. So if you were afraid of spiders, arachnophobia, arachnid is spider, phobia is afraid of, arachnophobia, afraid of spiders. Hydrophobia or hydrophobic, afraid of water. So you're going to face away from the water, okay? So that's the phospholipid bilayer on here. Um, and these legs, those are called the tails. The rounded portion, that's the head. Okay, just basic review what we're talking about here. Now, the plasma membrane, the, everything that you're seeing here, and not all the structures are represented, the plasma rep, uh, membrane represents a physical barrier. It protects the cell contents, so whatever's inside the cell, it's protecting it. It supports the cell structure, so you're gonna have a cytoskeleton, and it kind of helps to keep the shape of the cell. And it also separates everything from the inside from the outside. That's, what it, that's one of the things as a physical barrier. So physical barrier, think of a fence, think of a wall. Okay, that wall's been in the news lately, so what's the purpose of a wall? It keeps stuff on one side and it keeps stuff on the other side. If you have a fenced in yard, okay, with a wrought iron fence, okay, it keeps people out of your yard while you are on the inside of your yard. But it's not just that, it's selectively permeable. Plasma membranes are selectively permeable, permeable meaning it allows some things in and it keeps other things out or it keeps things in the cell, or it keeps things out of the cell, something along that line. If you think of a wrought iron fence for your yard, air can easily go through it. If it rains, water can easily go through that fence, but you can't walk through it, okay? You need a gate in order to get into the yard, but the gate has to be open in order for you to go through that fence. And that's what we're going to talk about here in a second with all these different proteins on it. There's also an electrical chemical gradient function of the plasma membrane. And on here, I don't know how to change the color of, of this, but so we'll just go with this one. So what this electrical chemical gradient means is we're going to have, if you can see that, I'm just drawing a positive sign here as an electrical charge and we're just drawing negative here. Don't, don't learn too much about this right now. We'll get into it. But an electrical chemical gradient refers to one side of the cell membrane. Or I should actually put these down here. Okay. Inside of the cell versus outside of the cell. So what we're looking at is a charge difference on the outside of the cell compared to the inside of the cell. So here we see there's a positive charge on the outside, and here there's a negative charge on the inside. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, and we'll go into much more detail on that in a, in a little bit. The last function of a plasma membrane is communication. Now remember that uh, glycolipid-ish that we were talking about? It basically allows other cells to recognize the self. And what you would see this in is immunity. So if you catch a virus, hey, COVID, you catch a cold, you catch the flu, okay, or you're infected by it, your immune system will then fight against it, okay? So a virus gets into your cell, you're, and we're going to get into this in great detail, so don't worry about that. You're going to, the cell's going to break apart that virus, and it's going to basically expose, if, I don't know if you can see that here, it's going to put part of the virus out here that exposes it to everybody else, okay? And it says it's foreign. But you're also going to have things coming out here that represents, hey, I'm supposed to be here, chill, don't try to kill me right now, okay? so. That's gonna be a communication. So if the cell is sick, it's telling other cells to, hey, 
Uh, why don't you kill me before I infect somebody else? I'm glad our healthcare system isn't really quite like that yet. Okay. So anyway, so that's what we're looking at on this component. Okay, so now let's look at uh, different types of these uh, proteins that's found within the cell membrane. And as we can see here, this is representing of a protein, that's representing a protein. Uh, and there's a lot of different types of proteins. There are two basic categories. There's integral, integral, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L, integral proteins. And those are proteins, like you see this purple one here, that extend through the uh, entire plasma membrane. Here's the plasma membrane. And it extends through the entire membrane. And it's a fixed structure in this. There are also peripheral proteins. So it's on the periphery. And that can either be external or internal, often internal in this case. And sometimes they're attached to this integral protein they can be in here. So there's a number of different proteins on here. We're not going to go through huge detail right now, okay? What we are going to look at are transport proteins. Um, and that is how things move into and out of the cell. But let's go back and look basically what are the different types of proteins. You are going to have channel proteins. This looks like a kind of a channel protein. There's carrier proteins. There's pumps. Um, last semester, you may have heard of uh, sodium potassium pumps on that. There are receptor or cell surface receptor proteins. Think of uh, acetylcholine leaving the nerve that... Uh, when leaves the synaptic knob of the nerve, it attaches to a receptor on the sarcoema of a muscle in order to propagate that electrical charge to lead to a muscle contraction, okay? There's our uh, the identity markers. That's kind of like these little suckers to let you know, hey, I'm, I'm good, I'm not. Uh, this is for foreign protein, whatever. There's enzymes. Enzymes are things that can be on the surface of the cell that speed up chemical reactions. There's uh, anchoring proteins, just like an anchor for a boat. It kind of secures things in place. There's cell adhesion molecules. Think of you're gluing two cells together, okay? And it helps to support that. So those are a few different types of proteins that we are gonna consider. So why don't we next start on the different types of membrane transport or different types of movement of substances within and out of the cell and throughout the body and stuff. So we're gonna look at passive transport then active transport and go through those different things. So I'm gonna have this video in a few different parts. So this was part one, stay tuned for part two.